of the IMO, but still, let's see if it's if it's hard. Um, so we have MA, MB, and MC. MB, and this is MC. Um, so we have the midpoint of, so M is the centroid. So it starts, it passes through the midpoint of AM and it's tangent to BC at MA. Interesting. Let's draw the three midpoints. Passes through D, and it's tangent to BC. Okay, so basically we want to do this. We want to draw the perpendicular line here, and then we want to draw the perpendicular bisector. Is that right? No, I don't think I did that right. Um, uh, it should be the perpendicular from M. That the perpendicular from uh, from M. Yeah, and intersect that line. Okay. Okay. So from M to this line. To this. Oh uh, yes. Uh, I I am a. Okay. Um. Oh, because it cuts it in three. That's why. Okay. Because it's like MMA is, is half of AM. Okay. So we have this circle. Uh, all right. And I might end up drawing those back in somehow. Okay, so we have that and this. I forgot. Uh, wait a second. Sorry, now I'm confused. So we had the perpendicular from M to MMA. Now we have the perpendicular from M to MMB. Um, oh, but we need to see where it meets. I did the wrong perpendicular. That was the problem. Okay. So it should be this one. Like that. Then one more. So M to MMC. Okay. We have this and this so that'll be the center of it there we go oh it's not co it's not showing their coaxial it's just showing they concur so i don't know if this is like pond slits uh or, or, or what do you call Forgot the name of it. Uh, do you mean the punslet point? The punslet like point. Of, yeah. What's well, it's not on the um uh nine point circle of ABC. Mm -hmm. so, 
So a positive point, it's usually showing that four nine point circles are concurrent, right? Yeah, and a bunch of other circles too, which is interesting. I wonder if that point lies on the nine point circle of uh, ABC. No. So yeah, we can always let two of the circles intersect and then try to show the, the other one goes through it. That's one way to do it. Um, maybe inversion also. But it does lie on the nine point conic of ABCM, which is interesting. <laughs> I don't know how that would be helpful. Uh, the nine point conic is like the conic through the midpoints through all six midpoints of the sides and also through the intersections of the sides. Well, in this case, it's just the Steiner uh, in ellipse of ABC. Okay. So that appears to go through uh, like uh, the point we want to show. So, so, so in GeoGebra, it's a conic, it goes through the midpoints, you said? Yeah, uh, and DEF as well. DEF. Like all, if we take four points, all six midpoints. And then in general also, the intersection of, for example, AM and BC, which is just MA again, so it's tangent to the side. Interesting. Well, in, in this special case, it's just the, like, the inner loops. That's interesting. Um, yeah, it's a cool fact. I just erase it because I don't know how to use it, but maybe there is a way. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, we could try taking the biggest circle and hiding it. And then we want to show uh, if these intersect at J. We want to show MC, J, uh, MC, what is it? No, I don't think that's right. J, F. Do we want to show JFMC as tangent to AB? I think that's what we want to show. I kind of like the problem better when it's symmetrical like this. Um, so let's think. Is there any way we can invert? I'm not sure there is. But yeah, pawn, so the pawn slip point says if you have like a quadrilateral like this, then the four, the nine point centers of JKN, J, or JKL, KLN, L, and J, and NJK, uh, or, or it says those nine point circles all concur at a point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, here we have three instead of four. So, yeah, I don't know if it would still work or not, or what the nine point circles would be. We could try to use the Gauss line because, like, if we take the midpoints, let me think about this. We take the midpoints of these three, 
Oh, these are the midpoints, yeah. Just that, that, that. What if we like inverted everything about the circumcircle of M A M B M C? Does that do anything? Uh, it's curious. Not really. Uh, the point, oh, it's not called JMO. The intersection we want to show uh, appears to be the reflection of the Feuerbach point. Uh, yeah, of the Feuerbach point over M. Really? I thought it might have something to do with the Feuerbach point. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'm just, maybe that's silly, but that's really interesting. Okay. So let's draw the Feuerbach point. Um, and we can draw the in circle. So yeah, if we just reflect every circle over M, then we we just actually we just get the uh, uh, points. Wait, I'm a little confused. Now. Uh, we get the Ponsler point of A B M C. Oh really? I, I'm not sure. I, I think I, I I don't know why I said Feuerbach point. That was completely wrong. Um, I meant the Ponsler point of A B M C, and okay. that's just. Every we reflect every circle of them. Okay, so let's see. Wait, no, that um, I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, I, I thought. Wait, <laughs> another circle here. Wait, there's three circles. One, two, three. That's right. Okay, so reflect this over M this over m this over m uh, okay uh what i said wasn't true <laughs> huh? but i mean it's still the reflection of the punchline point over m but apparently there's there's three more circles it lies on okay. so this this reflection lies on like uh, DEMC, for example. And that means that our point J, or now it's called N, uh, lies on, for example, M A M B F. So we have three more circles that our point lies on. Oh, so, oh, okay. So, and this, this is just the, I mean, this circle, is it centered at J? I think it might be. Uh, actually, I don't think so because 
Yeah, because that's like not centered at L. Okay, so there's three more circles it lies on. Interesting. So, yeah, let's see if we can show. So, can we, can we show that M A M B F, M A M C E, and M M B M C D occur? Uh, yeah, they. Uh, if, we, if we reflect everything over M, mm -hmm. then it's just the puzzle point of A, B, M, C. Okay. A, B, C, and M? Yeah. Okay. And then if we know that those concur, we want to show that. So, so first we can define the concurrence point of those, and then we could show that it lies on one of these circles, and then by symmetry it would lie on the other two, right? By the same argument. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we're saying these circles concur because if you reflect them over M, it would be the pawns to the point of ABC. Um, so that would be if you, like if you reflect this over M, it would be the circumcircle of E F D, right? Well, wait, is that right? Yeah, basically, hmm, I don't think that's right. Well, if you reflect, uh, for example, M A N M B, um, we get E D M C, and that's just the nine point circle of A B M. And then the same way we get the other nine point circles as well. Okay, so if you take this circle um, and you reflect it over M, so M C goes to F, M B goes to E, and D. Oh, goes to MA. So it would be the nine point circle of BMC. I see. So that makes sense. Okay. So we let N be the, the pawn slip point of those. And then we want to show um, that N. We want to show something's tangent, right? N MC. Yeah, what did we want to show? I forgot. So, uh, for we we could show, for example, that uh, the circumcircle of D M A N is tangent to B C. Okay, D M A N, and then by symmetry it would work for the others. So do you two like this session being three hours? Um, I was thinking at one point about making it two hours, but 
um, uh, Sir Dari used to be on the session and he really wanted it to be three hours, but he hasn't been on in a while. So what do you two think? Would you prefer two or three hours? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Like, most of the times, uh, three hours is, I think three hours is a pretty good time, but like sometimes I don't have time for the whole session. The whole thing. Obviously. Yeah. I think three hours allows us to solve more difficult problems. Um, but yeah, and then at the same time, it's a long time. So, okay, I'll just keep it at three hours for now. Um, and yeah, if you have to drop off, it's fine. But I was just wondering. All right. So D M A N. We want to show its tangent. Um, All right, see you next time. So yeah, we want to we could try to show angle N M A C is N D M A. Um, I don't know if it's worth drawing this point. I think we have to somehow like split angle M A J, uh, sorry M A N D. In a clever way. M A M A N D. So not M A. Oh, you're you're trying to show M A N D equals D M A D. Yeah. Okay. And then, like M A N D is the same as M A N M B plus M B N D, and we can push both of those around. Which yeah. already should give us some good. Uh, what do we do knowledge. with M A N D? How does how do we use that one? M A N D. I think I think we we split it into M A N M B because we have a circle for that one plus M B N D. Also, uh, 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 it's really hard to say the angles probably because there's like m and b and mb so m a n m b m a m m b no m a n uh <laughs> um right take your time well the midpoint of bc and then the point we want to show and then the midpoint of ac oh okay so so M A N yeah. that one plus uh, now from M B to N back to N uh -huh. and then to D because that add up, adds up to the M A N D that we want to show. Okay. And we have circles for both of these. Yeah. So we can push the first one to M A F M B. And the second one to 
MB MCD. And then for both of these, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure D is just the um, barycenter of AMC MB. Yeah, and this and, is parallel. This is a this is an isosceles trapezoid. Uh, or is it, oh no, we would need this point. These are parallel, um, but yeah, but I think now we just need to like. Uh, show that two angles, like now we can get rid of almost any everything. So we have the angle MB MCD that should be the same as just CBM. Yes. And then we have the angle MA FMB, and that's the same as uh, BMA by the homothety at C. BMA, yes. And we want to show. Oh yeah, now it's just triangle inequality. We want to show uh, for the circle to be tangent that that's uh, DMAB, so that's AMAB. And this is just uh, like the angles in the triangle BMAM add up to. Uh, interesting. So I like that we use the Ponce point. Um, so, um, so let, let N prime be the, on slip point of uh, A, B, C, and M. This is a very clever solution. Slip point of A, B, C, M. Reflect the three corresponding nine point circles over M. But then concur at N. Um, okay. The three, so the three circles are M, C, D, M, B. We'll say the reflected circles are um, M, C, M, B, B. M B M A F and uh, M A E or M A M B E. Okay, and then we will try to do an angle trace on. Just gonna write it on paper and then type it up. I'm I think the last one, instead of MB, it should be MC. Uh, oh yeah, you're right. And so then we will try to show that uh, DMAN is tangent to BC, that's our goal. Um, and so we're going to calculate angle M A and B. So angle M A and B is angle M A and B minus angle uh, D N and B, which is um, M A F and B. B minus so D and M B is D M C M B. And then that would be angle D M A minus angle uh, 
MBC. Yes. So BMA minus MBC. We want to show. Um, we want to show that's A M A B. And that should be true because wait M A F M B. So we have we have B M A minus M B C. Oh, would be that. Yeah, by the okay. So that would solve it. Okay. So M A F B. Which is uh, M A minus M B C. A M A B. All right. So that means the circumstance. So uh, let me make that A capital. So this means that the circumcircle of M A and B uh, is tangent to B C. to EC. So I'll say this means that um, so that circle, what was that? That was uh, that was omega A. So uh, passes through N by a similar argument, we have mega A. Omega B and mega C concur at N. It's a cool proof, so yeah. We use the pawn slip point in a creative way. All right, let's see. Oh, wait, I didn't put the last one. Hmm. Let's try this one. So um, we have a triangle ABC. And P and Q um, are on it. So this is P. Q um, B, B, Q, and C, P meet at O. Um, uh, A prime is the reflection of A over B, C. It off the page. Let's see. There it is. 
So yeah, obviously AO passes through the midpoint of BC. Um, here we have a kite. Um, it almost looks like P is the midpoint. So I'll do something like that. Um, so yeah, this is a kite and segment A prime O intersects the circumcircle of APQ at S. So um, like these circles are homothetic, but I won't draw right now. So uh, the segment, so not the ray, but the segment. That's S. Then we want to show BSC is tangent to that circle. So it looks like a homothety, right? Some kind of homothety about S. So maybe we'll want to see the rest of that circle. Let's see. Um, let me make that circle smaller. Something like this. Uh, but I don't want O and S to be too close. Hmm. Yeah, if I make it, it's hard to get a perfect diagram, but. Uh, if you move P down far enough uh, so that I the circle BP, uh, sorry, SPC wraps around. It looks okay as well. Oh, so like, I think you can another... see stuff pretty well here. Yeah, I like that. So now it's tangent on the other side. Um, okay. Maybe make it a taller. Oh, let's see. I think that looks okay. So yeah, could, could it be something like with a combination of homotheties? Because we know that these circles are tangent. Um, I don't know if this would help, but I'll draw the midpoint of BC. this point. Okay, so if we want to show a homothety somehow, maybe let SP and SQ meet the circle. You mean the big circle? The big oh, yeah. Or SA. Um, and I don't know if there's anything special about those points. Like, it would have to be parallel to BC. Um, let's see. 
Um. It seems that uh, if we draw the intersection of the tangent, the, the common tangent we want to show at S, um, if, we, if we take the tangent and intersect it with BC, um, then that's also the intersection of the, uh, that, that also lies on the tangent uh, at A to ABC and APQ. Interesting. So yeah, that seems pretty significant. Um, so yeah, I'm going to delete all of these that I just added. Um, maybe, let's see if it lies on. No, it doesn't lie on GE. Um, so yeah, that probably seems like a, a better way to go. Um, okay. So yeah, we can let the tangents at to both the, the common tangent to both these circles meet BC at a point, and then we want to show that that point um, and S. So yeah, I mean, actually, so I was thinking we could try to show a harmonic quadrilateral, but let's see. We want to show ES as tangent to both. Uh, if that's true, then we know that EA, ES, and EA prime are all the same length. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, so you would be the circumcenter of ASA prime. And I don't think this is going to be relevant, but like the intersection right below A prime is like uh, on the ASA median. Like we have a harmonic quadrilateral there. Uh, the intersection of EA prime or? Uh, like uh, the two circles that intersect just below A prime. Okay, this point is on the yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, if we can show E has the same power, let's see. What's also really weird to me is that we have to take S to be like between A prime and O, 
and otherwise the problem is just not true i i don't understand why that would be that is like uh, there has to be something special about the other intersection oh wait, it looks oh it looks like that is um if we take the other intersection mm -hmm. yeah that's on the parallel through uh h to bc so then that would make sense why we have a specific intersection because yeah they're two special points kind of one is the parallel the other is this point and maybe we want to start by showing that um G O A prime are collinear. Okay, so define G that way. Um, and then show that G O and A prime are collinear. Because then we could get rid of. Uh, Oh, and I was like really annoying, right? Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I would get rid of O. Um, maybe since D, well, maybe since D is the midpoint of BC, um, I don't know if we could use something with harmonics. Um, so I think you knew F lied on the median because the tangent and median are like form a harmonic bundle. Um, uh, yeah. And basically we're saying A, A B, well, A, B, F, C isn't, um, is A, B, F, C harmonic? Yeah, yeah, ABFC is harmonic. Oh. Because I, I knew the tangent at S passes through E, but I didn't realize the tangent at F passes through it. Well, that's that's be, because uh, like this like that that's because of the harmonic quadrilateral, right? Okay, so 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 how did you know F lies on the median? Uh, well, yeah, since E A and E F are the same length, E F is a tangent as well. E A and E F are the same length. Okay, so EF is also tangent. Uh, wait, we that's know EA, EA equals EF, okay, because they're... Because uh, yeah. that's how we define that circle. Yeah, you're right. Um, interesting. Let's see. Wait, I think it's not that hard to prove that uh, A prime O and G. 
Wait. Oh no. No, I don't think what I was trying to do was gonna work. Feels like some kind of homophily or something. Like if we let if we label this point, um well. Just curious, I wonder if H lies on the radical axis of these circles. No. Or what we could do is we could draw S, B, and S, C and see if there's something special about these points. Uh, that's that's got to be a coincidence. Let's see, or I would think at least. Oh, maybe not. Interesting. That's surprising. So apparently, if we label these points, then. I, KIQ, and JIP are collinear. That might help with showing a homophily, like takes SKJ to SBC or something. Um, let me make sure that's actually true. Yeah, however I move A, it looks like it's always true. I think that might just be ratios somehow because it's, it's like saying triangle KIJ is similar to PIQ, but yeah. So yeah, like if we can show KJ is parallel to BC, that would solve it. Um, and if we can show KI and Q are collinear, wonder if that would also solve it. I think it would, because this is cyclic right here, and PIQ is similar to KIJ. Um, so then I think, I think it, then you can just angle chase to show it's parallel to BC or something. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I think that works. Oh, wait, so does PI equal IQ? It looks like it. Is that obvious? Yeah. So this is like an isosceles trapezoid here.
I just like introduced point I on accident, but. Yeah, to show IP equals IQ. Um, well, first of all, oh, so yeah, if we can show that these are all collinear, yeah, then I think it would solve the problem, right? Um, yeah. Because then uh, I lies on like the um well i think yeah then i is just the circumcenter of like a prime ag so i a is ag but also but then we get ip is iq yeah right yeah that, then we'd have to have ip equals iq um and then we we'd get this like homophily i guess I think it would work. Um, so yeah, we just it reduces to showing G O and A prime are collinear. Which is kind of the same, like, so if we take the midpoint, so D is the midpoint of BC. So basically, we want to show that, we want to show that, I think we want to show that AGA prime, well, actually, that wouldn't work. this I think a good way to try to show that is uh, to intersect AG uh, with the circle circumcircle of ABC as well. And then we have like A prime D and whatever the intersection is going to be called, they, they'll be collinear. OK. A prime D and L. And then. Basically, as we move P along AB, L would stay the same. Um, yeah, so what if I hide this segment? Um, it's like, uh, 
as we move P, um, so yeah, I, I feel like I is kind of confusing things. So I'm gonna hide I for now. You just wanna show as we move P that A prime O and G are collinear. So, I think we can do Menelaus on ADL. So uh, A prime, or like uh, DA prime over A prime L is just uh, negative one half. Yeah, so we have this over this, which is, yeah, like negative a half times LG over GA times AO over OD. Um, Okay, so we want GL over GA and AO over OD. And AG over GZ is just AP over uh, PB. Oh, that's uh, sorry, AG over GL. I have the, uh, I should rename points. Yeah, interesting. It's AP over PB. And then AO over. And then Oh, and then we could use Menelaus the other way because CD over CB times PB over A. Yeah, so we could just use it the other way. Actually, maybe we could just use the homothety again somehow. So, but yeah, if we use Menelaus twice, that would work. Um, in, in which triangle do you want to use it the second time? Uh, so like triangle ABD with... Oh, oh yeah. So That's CD. Smart over CB times BP over PA times A over, over OD is one. It seems it yeah. maybe there's a way we could have done it all in one step. I'm not sure. Um, and anyways, that works. Um, so yeah, I'll type it up. Um, I'm gonna add these back in. And I don't think we need a point E for the solution, right? I, I don't think so either. We just use that these circles are tangent and therefore AG over GL is a P over PB. Okay. Um, yeah, that'll give us some more room to type up stuff. So let the parallel through A to B C um, meet omega at G. G. Um, and let it so meet omega, say, and ABC. G, L. Okay, so first we're going to try to show G, O, and A prime are collinear. Um, so by Menelaus, we want to show, uh, I forget what it was. Um, was the ADL, I think. Yeah, ADL. Okay, so, oh yeah, we wanted to show that A prime D over A prime L times LG over GA times A over AD. So, so, so we have, uh, a a prime d over a l times l g over g a times uh um a o over o d d 
and that should be equal to um, a half times AP over PB. times uh, AO over OD. Um, and then by Menelaus, by Menelaus we have CD over CB times AP over PA times AO over OD equals one. CB over CB times BP over PA times AO over OD equals one. I know it's probably negative one, right? But um, so so we have half. So then I'll say. CB over CB equals a half. So um, binding the above, um, we would have A prime B over AL. Over OD equals one. And that implies that G, O, and A prime are linear. By the converse of Menelaus. So we, we did use uh, that APQ and ABC are tangent. Um, so to when we said that LG over GA is AP over PB. So, so I'll, I'll just say that um, ABC and APQ are tangent. There's uh, BP over PA. Right, that's step one. So, okay, now we have point I and so for point I, um, if we define it this way. And first, so how do we know IP equals IQ? Um, well, it's it's so IA equals IG. That's that's clear. So that means IP equals IQ. Um, once we have that, um, so yeah, how do we define K and J, and then how do we solve the problem after that? So K and J, I def basically I define them before as the intersections of SB and SC with a smaller circle. Um, and then I try if we can show PIJ and QIK are collinear, that would solve it. Um,
Yeah, we could also define K and J by intersecting PI and QI with this circle. That might be easier because then we know it would be isosceles and we could get some ratios. So SK over S. So let, let me define K and J that way instead. So instead of drawing BS and what I could do is I could define K like this, and then I could try to show B, K, and S are collinear. Um, If I could show angle SKJ is SBC, that would solve it. So KJ over BC is KJ over PQ times PQ over BC. Um, and KJ over PQ is like a couple ways to think about it. Should be IS over IG, right? Okay, I think I found a way to just, uh, as a, uh, another definition for K that lets us prove both of them. Um, if we intersect the circle APQ with the circle ABI. ABI? Yeah. Interesting. Um, then we can get both collinearities. Like if we let that be K. Interesting. All right. And also uh, O doesn't in general lie on that circle. So that's. Yeah. That looks true in the diagram, but it isn't. Um, Then, for example, um, we want to prove SKI is uh, BKI. And SKI is just, uh, wait. Oh, wait, why doesn't that? You mean SKQ? OK, S SKQ is, oh. Wait a second, I'm not sure anymore if this works. Okay. Uh, oh, I think. I think we might want to define K as the intersection of BS with this circle ABI. And then I think we can get some results. I don't know if we can get everything, but we can get something okay so bs with abi yeah um so then we don't know it lies on this circle right yeah but we know that um ska is bka which is bia um and that is 
CIG, I think, just by reflection. Yes. Um, and that's AGS. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, that's AGS. Um, because of parallels. And that means that K lies on that circle, right? Uh, A G. Yeah. So that means A G K S is cyclic. Basically. Yeah, and that's the circle we wanted to show. And now we just need K I Q, and that should work as well. Uh, like S K I is B K I, and S K Q is S G Q, and I think these are. Uh, no, they're not exactly the same thing we had before. So yeah, so yeah, S K I would be B A I. Um, so we have B A I and S K Q is S A Q. So B A I and S A Q. We want to show are equal. And SAQ is SGQ. Well, oh, BAI and SGQ. Oh, that's true because oh. PAI is IGQ. Yeah, that's true by symmetry. Okay. So, yeah, I think we've solved it. Um, let me write it up. Yeah, so, so let let B A I um, intersect uh, B S at K. I think that's how we defined it, right? Let let the circle. Sorry. K, and then first first we'll show that this is cyclic so we would know that because um we want to show uh angle we want to show two angles out up to 180 so um so we want to show angle ags is akb um i think that's what we did right so AKB is AIB is GIC. Yeah, so AKB is AIB is a GIC, um, which is AGS. So that shows that AGKS is cyclic. Okay, so we have. AKB is AIB is GIC, which is AGS. And that shows that AGKS is cyclic. It's the first step. And then after that, um, and we want to show QI and K are collinear. And we'll say AGQSK. AGQ, I'll just throw on P and Q in here. Um, then let me write out the next one. So angle QKS, QKS is uh, QGS which is QGI, which is PAI, which is uh, BPI. Um, or QA, PAI is BAI, which is IKS. Okay, got it. So let me type it up quick. Um, 
Ding Dong. Kick ass. PI. PAI. BPI. KKS. And that, um, that means that QK and I are collinear. Yes. Uh, once we know that, um, yeah, from there it's not hard to show. So I'm not going to type up the whole thing, but um, if we let PI define J similarly to K, then it's not hard to show that. So, so I'll, I'll draw point J. Um, uh, I must have erased it, but whoops. What did I just do? Okay. Define J similar to K, then it's easy to show that SKJ and SQ um, BC are homothetic. Then it's easy to show SKJ and BC are homothetic. And that implies BSC is tangent to omega. All right, we solved this from just in time. So that's awesome. Uh, and it just barely fits at the bottom. So um, thanks for participating, Johannes. Um, and for everyone yeah, watching. Yeah, definitely. And uh, for everyone watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. So we'll see how the IMO results come back. It should be fun. Um, I still have to solve a couple of the other problems. Um, so if you want to join us in the future, uh, feel free to email me at mgreenb801 at gmail.com. Uh, we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. So my email, uh, it's in the description of my video. So thanks for watching and have a great day.